happening there. Yeah, I think, I think yeah, we have to, this is something we all saw. So there's a, a, a Greek play uh, called the Bacche, and the end of it is the uh, mother uh, holding a head, severed head in her lap, and the father comes in and says, what do you see? It's an important moment. What do you see? And she says, oh, it's a trophy, because she's intoxicated. Right intoxicated with Dionysian revelry. And then he says, look again, and you can see the intoxication wearing off. And she says, I see horror. Mm -hmm. I see suffering. Mm -hmm. I see grief. So the question here is, what do you see? So we, as Americans, mm -hmm. we, have a, 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 we bring a certain set of expectations to this thing. So there's a white cop and there's a black man, and the black man's on the ground, and the white cop is on top of him. And we have been schooled to be revolutionaries. I don't care where you come from. If you're an American, you're a revolutionary. And you have this instinctive reaction against authority, any type of authority, and it's been racialized, and it's been weaponized, and all you have to see that, and then suddenly the story tells itself. Okay? And at this point, I think we need to ask that question again. What do you see? What do you see? And the Palestinians mm -hmm. saw this. Mm -hmm. And they saw something different. Mm -hmm. They saw a knee hold. Mm -hmm. Okay? They saw the knee on the neck. Mm -hmm. And why did they see the knee on the neck? Because the Israelis, every day of the week, have some Palestinian kid on the ground, and this is the way they restrained this kid, by putting the knee on the neck. And I tweeted this mm -hmm. and got pictures, mm -hmm. one right after another, one incident after another, mm -hmm. okay? And no one in America is seeing this, mm -hmm. because we, we just are blind right. to this issue. And so the question is, uh, why is that guy doing that? Right. Where did he learn how to do that? Sure. And we, you, you and I, we, the three of us, we go way back because we were talking about South Bend, Indiana at a certain right. point when this Jewish guy showed up and he was going to appoint our new police chief for us. The new mayor comes in, we got a black police chief, everything's fine, except in the mind of our homosexual mayor, and we got to have some change here. And so he comes in, and this guy ends up being a, a mercenary from Tajikistan. Yeah who is going to engage in what we said back then was the Israelization of American police forces, of the local police forces in America. Okay? And we protested against it, yeah. and maybe uh, in the work of God we had some effect, and that man is no longer here. But the threat is here. So we're back to Minneapolis. Where did this guy learn how to do that? Well, it turns out that the ADL goes around to every single police force in this country and basically pressures them into going to seminars given by Israeli cops yeah. on how they subdue the Palestinians. Now, we don't know whether this guy learned that whole there right. in that thing, but we do know if you go to that, you're going to learn how to treat your fellow citizens the way Israelis treat Palestinians. Yeah. And that's the big story here. Okay, because it turns out, lo and behold, guess where the police force in Minneapolis went in 2012? Yeah. They went to Chicago to a seminar given by Israelis on how to deal with terrorism, yeah. which means your fellow citizens are terrorists, and you better treat them the way we treat Palestinians. Yeah. This is the, the, the story here that gets completely ignored. Yeah. Okay, completely ignored. So that's one side. That is one side. That's the white cop mm -hmm. on the top. What about that black man mm -hmm. on the bottom there? That's the other side of the story. Well, uh, are the Jews involved in that? Now, we know the Jews are involved with the white guy, with the cop, because I've already explained that. What about Black Lives Matter? Mm -hmm. Black Lives Matter, now I remember this back at the time of Ferguson. Okay, there was a, this is a replay of Ferguson. Everything is some replay of something else. But at the time of, her, I look at, I never heard of Black Lives Matter. I look into it. What well, turns out George Soros gave Black Lives Matter $34 million. So wait a minute. I think there's a pattern emerging here. And we were on to this pattern years ago because it happened in South Bend. Okay, you've got these people coming in 
The, the policemen are supposed to be citizens in uniform. That's what Boinkins was. He rose up through the ranks. He was a citizen in uniform. I know people. I know cops. I was on the, just to give you an instance, I'm on the, uh, bringing my boat in after rowing, and a cop comes up to me. And he says to me, uh, what's your name? I said, Mike. Uh, what's your last name? I said, is there a problem, officer? He says, you're E. Michael Jones, aren't you? I want to tell you that the cops agree with you. They watch your YouTube videos and they agree. That's a citizen. Right. Right. These are, this is a citizen talking to another citizen and having some type of communication. Right. No violence, communication here. So what we're confronted with now is a situation in which the, the, the Jewish revolutionary spirit is working both sides of the fence here. We got the Israelization of the police force through the ADL and the Israelis, and you got the weaponization of black people through Black Lives Matters and George Soros. And that's the issue. That's the issue that we're facing with here, and nobody's allowed to say it. Because there's a word that I said you're not allowed to say in this conversation. But we, I'm saying all of us here, have the freedom to discuss these issues as citizens of South Bend, Indiana, and as a way of saying, uh, this is not violent. We, we don't have violence here in South Bend. Sure, we have violence. We have crime like every place else. But we didn't, this place didn't go up in flames. We didn't have these outside, outside agitators wouldn't even come because I don't think they could, they could get a foothold here. And that's what I like about South Bend. And that's what I think I'm here to preserve.